In this part of the world, sightings of orcas or killer whales are extremely rare. That's because under regular circumstances, they simply can't get here. She's upside down. For most of the year, this water is frozen. The entrance to this bay is usually blocked by heavy pack ice. And with their large dorsal fins, orcas can't get through. This is Eclipse Sound, a natural waterway in the Inuit-owned territories of the Canadian Arctic. Far away from any major human settlement, it's home to iconic Arctic species, like bowhead whales, narwhals, Arctic seals, and of course, the polar bear. But there's a major shift going on. There are more killer whales now. In the past, we would see them maybe once in the summer. Now we see many more than that. There is no question that the climate crisis is changing the face of the Arctic as we know it. In August 2019, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau visited Canada's far north to witness the dramatic effects of climate change in the region. His administration declared the fight to protect the Arctic ecosystem a number one priority. But it's a fight against time. Historically, sea ice grows and shrinks with the seasons covering the entire region from the North Pole to the Hudson Bay with ice. And while the amount of permanent ice is retreating, the seasonal extension is also experiencing a downward trend. This seasonal ice plays a big role in shaping local ecosystems, shutting off the region from the rest of the world for much of the year. This brings us to the question, why is being locked into vast amounts of ice so vital to many local species? Killer whales are a so-called cosmopolitan species, meaning that their range extends to appropriate habitats across the entire planet. They are classified into different groups, inhabiting the northern and the southern hemisphere. They have been extensively studied at different points in the world's oceans. It's well known that they are great hunters, developing key strategies adapted to specific prey. To feed on herring in the North Atlantic, they confuse and disable swarms of fish using a range of high-pitched sounds, stunning individuals so they can simply snap them up. Off New Zealand's coasts, they deliberately knock out stingrays with amazing precision to avoid being stung by their prey before enjoying their meal. In Patagonia, they charge straight at the beach, capturing ambushed seals on the shore. Killer whales are undisputedly the dominant predator wherever they go. In the Canadian Arctic, killer whales were recorded as open water season visitors as early as the mid-1800s by local hunters and European pioneers. But the species humans witness most year-round is the narwhal. Narwhals spend most of their lives underwater and the entire winter locked in ice. Known as unicorns of the sea, they have a single tusk that can reach up to three meters. Essentially, it's an inside-out tooth, directly connected to the brain and incredibly sensitive on the outside. Until recently, narwhals lived in peace here, without having to worry about ocean predators. But now this is changing. We know they eat seals and narwhals. And as they're predators like us, they can probably eat anything they can get their hands on. In order to scientifically substantiate the observations made by local hunters, scientists started tracking orcas coming in during the summer months. They had to attach satellite tags to the whales to be able to follow their movements. Very little 
whales not about killer whales in the Arctic and there are a few key questions that we hope to answer with our work in particular where killer whales are coming from and what they're feeding upon so what I'm really interested in determining is whether killer whales are are coming in and focusing exclusively on one prey type or if they're preying on a wider variety of prey type the satellite trackers showed that the tagged killer whales stuck together and moved on as a larger group. They traveled fast, with very direct movements, seemingly knowing the region and where they were going. It turned out they were moving north, leaving Eclipse Sound. Meanwhile, a large group of local narwhals gathered together in a bay to the west for the late summer months. This secluded bay served as a safe summer nursery to bring up their young, born just a couple of months earlier. The narwhal group didn't seem to be aware of the unexpected threat approaching. The satellite data showed that the killer whales were heading directly towards the bay where the narwhals were, trapping them in with no way out. Under normal circumstances, killer whales wouldn't travel that far to the west at that time of year, risking getting trapped by the encroaching winter ice. But they seized the opportunity and, with a never-before-seen hunting method, surrounded the narwhals to push them close to the shore. There, they charged at their trapped prey, leaving them no chance of escape. The group of killer whales were able to feast on their victims, tearing apart the entire narwhal nursing ground. There was enough for them to feed the entire group, including their young, with plenty of proteins and fat to store up for the next winter, when they will have less food available. Well, entirely what we expected to see these uh, changes occurring from the top down, that um, killer whales could be this dominant a predator that could actually uh, result in, in the death of a lot of uh, whales from southern populations. You know, this may be how the distribution will change, how narwhal and beluga will end up even further towards the poles. They, they are not necessarily going to move there, it's just that the ones in the south might be uh, suffering uh, predation by killer whales at, uh, at the rates that they can't um, maintain as a population. Today, it's clear that the Arctic ecosystem is changing. Yet the people affected have different opinions on what to expect from these changes. Local hunters might even spot a benefit. We like hunting narwhal, and killer whales herd them closer to the shore for us, which makes hunting easier. We appreciate having the killer whales around to help us hunt. While on the other hand, most scientists see it differently, focusing on the long-term challenges as opposed to short-lived benefits. This is a big problem for the Inuit. I mean, they rely on ice-adapted whales and seals as their food, their cultural subsistence hunts, and it's just, it's important to them. They're not necessarily going to be able to learn to use the new species it could be a real change of life for them. But it's, it's uh, something to watch into the future as uh, the changes unfold. We can get an idea of what might be happening, but we're probably going to be surprised. There's going to be some more things that we didn't anticipate that'll happen. There are very few places left on Earth where we can see such profound changes as we're currently witnessing in the Arctic. The future of this icy world now hangs in the balance. Hey there, I'm Philip, video producer here at Terramata. I hope you enjoyed the short talk 
and could get a better insight on how the Arctic ecosystem is changing. If so, I'd recommend you to subscribe and turn the notifications on because there's much more coming up.